Okay, well, uh, first of all, our guest today is Barry Watling, who is the uh, manager of Maidstone United, uh, back during the glory days of the FA Cup runs in the late 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. And I guess the first question, Barry, is, um, you know, how are you and, and what are you up to now? I'm fine. Uh, 69 years old now, so I don't play football any longer. Uh, but uh, when I left Maidstone, I, I, whilst I managed a couple of other local clubs, Chatham, Sittingbourne, Bromley, uh, I decided I needed to get a career, so I went into financial services, uh, where I've been virtually ever since in various guises. Um, now, I mean, you were the, the manager during the time that Mason really came to national attention with those FA Cup runs. I mean, it, it's going a long way back, I know, but um, the, the Charlton game is probably one of the most memorable games in, in the club's history. What were your memories of the build-up to that match? Uh, most football clubs, if you were still in the Cup, don't matter whether it was a first division club or a non-league club, you know, you try and get a few guys around, mm. around the radio to get a reaction. And, and, and so we, we heard, you know, at the club, I was, I was general manager, so we, we were at the club and we heard the draw. And, and it was probably, from everybody's point of view, the best draw it could have been. Yeah. Charlton were the top Kent club, you know, they were in the second division at those t in those days. And, and, it, and it was just a, a great draw, really. Mm. Uh, and it, things really kicked off uh, an hour before kickoff. Um, when the managers go in and give the referee the team sheets. Because we were probably the only club in the country then using squad numbers. Mm. Every other club, in every football league club, every club were using 1 to 12. Yeah. We were using squad numbers as, as very much everybody does now. And I went in and we had a number 16, a number 14, a number 20, uh, and uh, passed them over and Andy Nelson said to the referee, what, what's this rubbish? This is just a, and, and his reaction was, this is just a joke. Yeah. You know, what are we, this is the FA Cup, what are we doing playing against, you know, these numbers are a joke. And so we had a, a bit of an up and a down and, and quite rightly the referee said, well, you know, there's nothing in the rules that says yeah. what numbers people have to wear. And, and so he was quite taken aback. So that, that was the first stage, which I, in a funny sort of way, I thought, well, that, that's one up to us, mm. you know, because we're a bit individual. Uh, we went one nil up in the game, as, as, as everybody knows. And um, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Because it was, when, when did it, the goal come? Cause it, well, the goal came quite early in the yeah. first half. You know, is it Glenn Coupland? Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Coupland, who, who was a game, you know, I talked about the back four. It was probably one of the, the most sought after centre forwards at our level at that time. Scored a brilliant goal. We're 1 0 up, and, and uh, whilst we were taking a bit of a battering, um, they hit the post once, I think, uh, during the first half, from memory. Um, we were okay, half time 1 0, thinking it was fine. They scored not long into the second half, made it 1 1. and. It was a bit of a siege, mm. you know, and as I say, the, the defenders I've already mentioned uh, kept everything at bay. Um, How were they reacting when they were? The well, crowd th their crowd were on to them. Our, yeah. our crowd seemed to double, triple in size. Yeah. You know, we had, we had a good following. And um, at 1 1, we were hanging on. And then, of course, the our glory, if there would have been any glory on the day by getting a result, was taken away because uh, Flanagan and Howes decided to have a fight yeah. towards the end of the game. And it was quite near, it was very near the end, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about five minutes from the end, I yeah. think it was. And at the time, they were battering us. And so to see two of their, their two top forwards get sent off was, was a bit of a relief for me in the dugout, thinking, oh, we can see this out. As it happened, uh, the last five minutes, their nine men probably played better than they played in the whole game. Uh, but of course, all the press reports after the game, yeah. it was all about nobody had ever seen two of the same team sent off for fighting. Uh, and, and, and we didn't really get much of a uh, favourable report that we should have done. Yeah. And the, the replay was, I think, the, did the floodlights fail during <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we were, again, you know, it, it was. Uh, a difficult game, you know, we were used to having less than 1,500 people and all of a sudden we're getting 15,000, so we yeah. had to get the, ga the game ready for, for uh, within a couple of days. Uh, they went 2-0 up and uh, the, one of the floodlight power stations in the corner failed. I think 
their immediate reaction of their coaches and Andy Nelson was that we'd spiked it and, and were trying to get the game abandoned. Uh, and and uh, be, being general manager, I had to go in and, and have a look with the, the electricians to make sure. It, yeah. You know, so I wasn't with the team at that time. Anyway, you got got the lights back on. As soon as the lights back on, I think we, we scored, made yeah. it two one. And in the end, we lost two one. And and the game, without getting any credit, it was all about the night. The lights went out yeah. rather than the good performance that we'd made. I mean, really, it, it changed the club forever, didn't it? That that game, in fact. Well, I, I I think. You know, um, in those years, we were probably known as the Manchester United of non-league football, yeah. and, and the fact that it was Manchester United. We travelled in the best coach, uh, we had the best facilities, and, 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 and everything. You know, the guys signed first, and, and immediately, as now, you know, the first thing they did on a Friday morning before their first game they played, we took them down to the outfitters. They got a blazer, they mm. got a sweater. You know, we we were. The top, or that was the way that Jim and the board wanted us to be, and so we looked the part. And, and my job was to make sure we played the part. So two years after that, which is already one epic FA Cup tie, you've got these three games with Kettering and then three games with, with Gillingham. Do you remember much about the? I think Frank Ovar scored a great goal, didn't he, in the first game at Kettering? Yeah, I, 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 Frank Ovar only scored great goals. Mm. Frank Ovar. <laughs> Uh, was a was an enigma. Mm. He, he was probably one of the, the the best ever non-league players that Kent has seen right across the board. Played for many many years before we were able to grab him from mm. from Folkestone. Uh, it was always a thorn in our side if we played Folkestone. So when he joined Maidstone, it was his opportunity. Mm. And and some of the goals he scored, I can't remember to the to minute how good it was. But all I can say is nearly every goal he scored was special. Mm. You know, he had certain talent and, uh, and ability, speed, and and, and could could um, take people on and score goals. And and I suppose again, what I remember most about the the Kettering matches was after the one-one. You know, you, you you have to go in a room and toss a coin to see who's at home. Yeah, and Kettering, like Maidstone at that time, were one of the top non-league sites. Mm. You know, so it, so it, it was really at our level a clash of the giants, and to get home time made the difference, in yeah. my opinion. You know, if we'd have lost the toss and gone there, I think the the odds would have would have swung in their favour. And the, and, uh, and the we, lights I, failed again, didn't they? Uh, not as badly as the as the yeah. um, the other game from memory. You know, uh, all I can remember is well, I think we sneaked it one nil. Mm. And we went to the next round of the cup, and of course the next round of the cup uh, took us towards Gillingham. Yeah, and of course, uh, I mean that in particular, the first two games of that were goalless, weren't they? Yes. Um, were you? You think Mason were battered Jerry knows, or was it more even than that? No, I I think as with the Charlton game, the first game when you go away to play a league side, mm. or, 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 or you you play a league game, you're always pensive because your your objective is not to get hammered. Yeah. And, and we came away with a good result and we gave as good as we got. Then of course we played them at home and probably the home game we were very confident. Yeah. You know, because we knew a lot of the players, some of the players playing in our team mm. were ex Gillingham. And and in their mind, whilst they were playing for Maystone, they, they in other circumstances they could have still been playing for Gillingham. Yeah. So so it wasn't such a, a gap. And uh, again we drew nil nil. And then again, we had to draw lots of toss a coin or whatever, and, and the third game went back to Gillingham. Mm. And um, the team that night were, were just fantastic. Yeah. You know, but, but well, what was it like in the, after you beat Gillingham? What was happened like in the dressing room? When well, in the in the dressing room, it was it was just fantastic. You can imagine, mm. particularly for the guys who used to play for Gillingham. Yeah. You know, the Kenny Hills and, and, and people, uh, John Hutton. You know, they, they, all of a sudden, you know, they'd gone back there. They'd been told they weren't good enough. Yeah. They dropped out of the league, and they'd gone back there and they'd proved the point. And, and, and it was fantastic. Okay. Um, after that, you sort of drifted out of the game for a while. You've, you've had your financial career and that, but I mean, you've been watching Mason since they come back. Did you follow Mason when they were in the wilderness years? Yeah, well? I, I think I think you always follow teams you played for. So following as much as you're looking for results, seeing who they'd signed being interested in the players, uh, going to watch them at places like City Mall and Ash Ashford, no. I uh, thought it was great when they came back to the town. I think what they've done is is, is tremendous. I think they're going to uh, find a level this year and hopefully 
uh, kick on from here. You know, I think that expectations are very high, but I think the quality in the league that they're in now is is uh, quite a few steps up from the Ryman League, yeah. uh, as we've already found. So hopefully. Uh, they'll find a level and then next year they can kick on and we can get back to where we were and of course that was league football.